For more than 20 years, I've been obsessed with guitars. From playing them, to working on them, to buying and collecting them, I've built quite the collection of awesome custom guitars. Now, I'm turning my passion into a profession by seeking out old, beat-up guitars and giving them new life, all while trying to make a profit. I'll be searching everywhere for used gear that I can refret, rewire, repaint, whatever it takes to make it a real shredder. This is Trash to Thrash. These, my friends, are some sweet guitars. These are a few 1990s Jackson performers I've built up. I love these things because I grew up in the 90s and I knew a few people with them. They're really easy to work on. You can use all kinds of different parts on them these days and really customize them and make them yours. Another thing I love about these guitars is now that they're over 20 years old, they're pretty cheap to pick up used. But that's because they've been through the ringer. Many of these guitars need a new paint job. Sometimes they need a new fret job to make them play good again. And most of them are going to need some new guts, some really nice pickups. With today's options, you can pretty much make any guitar sound, any style you want, pretty easily. In the last week, I was able to track down two of these classic Jacksons. This one here on the left, the black one. And this one in the middle, blue with a flame maple top on it. This one on the right is a personal project of mine that I'll talk about later. So these two right here are gonna be the first ones I'm gonna be building to sell. I plan on having a pretty similar game plan for both of them, but since they're in quite different condition, they're gonna have quite a bit of different work done to them. Let's start with the black guitar. First off, it'll be getting some new paint, a color called Berry Pink. Really cool, bright color. I'm even gonna be matching the headstock too. Most Jacksons don't come with a painted headstock, they come with a black headstock. But some of their custom shop models come with a matched headstock, which is going to give this guitar a really cool custom look. Next up will be a brand new set of black chrome EMG pickups, the Rev set. They're going to look amazing and sound even better. Of course, I'm going to have to add another knob back on where the missing volume knob was, as well as replace the toggle switch with a black one. Next up is going to be an Iron Age guitar accessories kill switch with a magenta LED light built into it. And last but not least will be a toggle switch to control a boost circuit that'll give you a 20 decibel boost so that you can have extra sustain or gain whenever you need it. You could always use a little extra power. Since I'm going to be taking the neck off to repaint the guitar, that's when I'm going to refret it. The frets on this guitar have been badly worn down from years of playing and they're very flat and have a lot of dead spots. Flat spots create vibration and buzz on a guitar, which is no good. The frets of a guitar should be rounded, like this illustration shows. But over years of playing on them and having metal strings grinding against them, they flatten out. Sometimes this can be repaired and refiled, but in this case, I believe these things are way worn and should just be replaced. I'll talk more about this blue flame maple top Jackson soon. But this blue one here is my next personal project. I'm going to be converting all the hardware to gold, put a gold Floyd Rose on it, installed this really cool knob from Q Parts, and a kill switch from Iron Age Accessories, gold bezel with a blue LED light. I love gold hardware. My friends even say I have the Midas touch because every guitar I build turns to gold. Maybe it's the Murray touch. The plan with this Jackson here is to put all gold hardware on it. So it used to have black hardware and I've started switching it. And I've been searching for a gold Floyd Rose to throw in here, a real German made one, and a set of gold EMG pickups. A brand new gold Floyd Rose goes for about $225 online. But I knew if I searched Reverb, eBay, Craigslist, all my usual places for used gear, I'd probably find a deal on one somewhere. After a couple of weeks of searching, I found exactly what I was looking for, and it was only about a half an hour from my house. The guy had a whole bunch of other guitar parts for sale too, so I thought maybe I could work a deal here and flip some of that gear for a little extra profit to throw back into this guitar and have it not hit my wallet so hard. So that day I went out to Santa Rosa, California, beautiful area, real close to where I live, and picked up the parts. The seller also had four DiMarzio pickups, a set of Telecaster pickups, some bass pickups, a set of gold Grover tuners, of course, the original Floyd Rose in gold, and this gold licensed Floyd Rose, which they aren't built with the same craftsmanship of an original Floyd Rose, but they're still very good, 
and this one looks like it came off a of Jackson, which is exactly what I'm into building. He was asking $80 for the Floyd Rose, but then I offered him $200 for everything, and he accepted. So I grabbed all the parts, headed home, and took all the DiMarzio pickups and listed them online. I knew I could sell them for a profit. I know what these things go for. They're great quality pickups. They're just not my taste. I ended up selling those pickups for about $200. So that went back into the bankroll and I emptied out my pickup drawer, sold a bunch of pickups I don't think I'm gonna be using anymore and some old pedals. So I got up to $600. I'm gonna use that $600 to buy a couple new guitars, outfit them with some new pickups, clean them up really good, and see if I can flip those things for even more. Buy a couple more guitars and just keep that going. So I took about half of that money and I bought both of these Jacksons here. I got a killer deal on these things. So I took the other half of the money and I ordered some parts for this guitar. So while they're on their way, it's time to take this guitar apart, start stripping it down, get some new paint on it, and get it ready for some new pickups and other parts. The first step is to remove the strings, the remaining four strings that are on this guitar. Floyd Rose bridges are interesting because the strings load in backwards. The end of the guitar string has a ball on it. Normally that ball is held in place at the bridge of the guitar, but with the Floyd Rose, they actually load in backwards at the top of the guitar headstock, and then the string itself is pressed down against a block in the bridge by a screw. It's just a different way that they're designed. They're designed to sit in a floating position and can do some very special things like a dive bomb. <laughs> Or you can even pull them up. That would knock a normal guitar completely out of tune, but Floyd Rose guitars are equipped with a locking nut that literally presses the strings down before the tuners can even affect the string. You could even tighten the string and snap it behind the nut, and the string doesn't break on the opposite side. A Floyd Rose pivots on two screws, and in the back of the guitar there are a set of springs that pull the Floyd Rose back fighting against the tension of the strings on the other side of the guitar. That's what keeps it floating. It's a pretty amazing design. The next step is to remove the tuners from the headstock and then to remove the neck. This neck had a shim under the locking nut. I'll replace it with some quality brass shims. Going over to the back, I found a stripped screw when removing the back plate and I'll repair that soon. Here are the springs I mentioned earlier. I also found the switch is bent, but I would replace that anyways. I also found that the bridge that was on this guitar was not intonated. These saddles here should not be in a straight line. They should be more staggered, like the ones on this original Floyd Rose. This is what a properly set up bridge would look like. Not all in a line like the ones on this Floyd Rose that came off the guitar. Those saddles must be set in a very precise position. Each string must be properly offset to make the guitar sound right. So I'll reset it up. That's not a big deal for me. Next, I removed all the hardware from the guitar, including the pickups, and I desoldered them from the potentiometers and the other electronics. I may actually be reselling these. I'm gonna look into it and see what they're worth. They have no use to me anymore, so might as well get whatever I can for them, even if it's just 25 bucks. All right, now that the guitar is completely stripped down, all the electronics are out of it, everything is ready to go, it's time to start sanding on it. And that's very basic, just some 220 grit sandpaper and going at it. Really scuffing up the top of that guitar and getting it ready for some paint. Now that the guitar is all sanded down, I'll be adding a hole right here for the kill switch and another hole over here for the boost switch. This drill bit is called a Forstner drill bit. I'll be using this to drill the hole for the kill switch. It has a diameter of about 5 eighths of an inch and I'll be using it through the drill press. Now we have all the holes drilled including this boost switch hole. But when we flip over the guitar, we find another problem. The hole is outside the guitar's original control cavity. And I knew this going in, but I wanted the holes to be precisely evenly spaced. So we're gonna extend the cavity over using a router. You can see the cavity has a shelf that's approximately an eighth of an inch deep that goes around the whole perimeter. And that's so that the cover can sit on that and be screwed in. You'll notice I've drawn some lines that follow the original body lines. I started at this point here and extended it around, and then I took this straight edge down here and extended it further. I wanted to keep the original curve from the old cover, so I simply traced it onto the guitar. Now it's time to bust out the router and start chipping out some wood. 
The router is a real cool tool because you could set the depth automatically. So that'll allow me to make my shelf first and then I'll come back and do my deeper routes afterwards. I think we got what we need and it's time to move forward. The new cavity turned out great. It's got a nice shelf here for the screws to mount and it's got plenty of space in there for the boost switch. The next step will be to make a new cover for it. I had some clear acrylic laying around that I thought would be perfect for this guitar. Then I'll throw a couple LEDs in with the wiring and it'll light up the back cavities when you flip the guitar over. Even though it's on the back of the guitar, these are the little details that make a custom guitar really shine. Literally. So over here I got the cover on. I just drilled all the countersunk holes like I was saying. And it fits beautifully. And I also made this one, which still has the cover on it, the plastic on the outside. But I'm going to leave it like that for a while. Even this one I'm going to put into a plastic bag. So while I'm working on this thing for the next couple weeks, it's not going to get messed up. It's pretty custom. I don't want to have to make it again. Um, but yeah, there you go. There you can see all the countersunk angled holes there and um, drilled all, everything out and came out exactly as I hoped. Here's the body with all the holes drilled and a fresh coat of primer. This guitar had a few little dents and chips and things in it, so I put some Bondo on them, sanded them flat, and now this thing is ready for the paint booth. Now I'm going to head next door and get spraying. Be sure to tune into the next episode to find out how this guitar turned out and to see what my exact plans for the blue flame maple jacks and I showed before are. Rock on, my friends.